Hey everyone and welcome to our next installment of Dolly Decades. So if you didn't watch the first episode on the 1960s, this is kind of just a celebration of the different decades of dolls. It's not focused on one particular doll type, although depending on the generation we're talking about, we may or may not have more or less examples to show. So today we're going to be talking about the 1970s. I absolutely love this year. I even brought out my American Girl Julie. She was not produced in the 1970s. However, she is styled to be like a 1970s um, girl. That's what her whole book's about. Um, and I just love her clothing and collection. And the reason why I actually really wanted Julie was because she reminded me of the Barbies from this era. So very near and dear to my heart. I'm gonna go through um, kind of an overview of how we feel about the decade, the de then, then the dolls, some of our favorite clothes and play sets. But I do have collection videos on all of these dolls and play sets and stuff. So I'll put them in the eye cards. One of the things I love about the 1970s is this is where the fashion doll really took off and you'll, you'll start to see that there are more companies starting to produce dolls, they're producing just more dolls in general, like if you compare how many Barbies were released in the 60s compared to the 70s you'll notice there are more. Um, there's also more diversity in this decade, meaning that this is when you start to see like African American friends of Barbie pop up. They have like Hispanic Barbie, I think they did like Hawaiian Barbie. And they introduced their first Dolls of the World uh, line in yes. 79 toward the end of the decade. Yeah. Also, this is when celebrity dolls, in my opinion, really took off. It's not that they didn't make celebrity dolls in the 60s, but this is where I feel like you start to see a lot. You'll see like the Mego dolls. I'd say that even Mattel, like if you look through our uh, Mattel Fashion Dolls book, they experimented with more like brands. Yes. Um, and overall, everything from this decade is just really bright and cheerful and kind of gaudy because that was, that's what was stylish at the time, which I really love that. I love how like cartoony and bright, especially the Barbie stuff is. But the one major drawback to anything made in the 70s in terms of dolls is that the quality is just not good. I know that there's this really big misconception that older is always better, but that's just not true. If you own 70s Barbies, you know what I mean. Even other brands, the reason for this is because based on what I've read, the manufacturing countries changed. So in the 60s, Barbie, at least, was manufactured in Japan and here in the United States. So everything was really nice quality. And although, you know, there was some faults with like how much hair the dolls were rooted with, they did a really good job considering this was the first time making something like that. But then as you move into the 70s, this is where you start to see the um, different types of plastic reacting. So you get the melting effect. Um, a lot of dolls that have gimmicks fall apart. Um, even in the later 60s, you'll start to see that the clothes tend to be made with thinner, um, cheaper materials that are more flammable or just disintegrate over time. I've had dolls that I got boxed from this era that the clothes literally fused to the dolls in the yeah. box because it was just cheap clothes and cheap doll. So it's not, and the furniture is super fragile. Oh, and the way they're dyed is different too. Yes. And um, like around this time, the late 60s, early 70s, the way they made the skin is they molded it and then they colored it after they pigmented it later. So if you try like an uh, OxyClean stain, stain removal treatment, you'll get a bleaching effect, whereas on earlier dolls or later dolls, you won't see this because they molded the pigment into the plastic. Yes. So it's like even if you lift up a few layers, it's the same color all the way through. You would have to like really abuse the treatment to get some kind of discoloration. But on 70s dolls, it does in fact leave them with pale patches. They are definitely not the best quality, but I just adore them anyways. Yeah, and the, the colors are gaudier, the styles are gaudier. But what's cool about it is I like how you see a lot of oranges and you see a lot of blues and you see like a lot of reds. and. You don't see as much pink in this era. If you look at magazines or celebrities or even the way Julie was styled, you'll see that the Barbies were pretty accurate in the way that they were dressed, I feel. I mean, I didn't grow up in the 70s, but I feel like a lot of the dolls were wearing more accurate, realistic clothing, whereas nowadays and like in the 90s, they're not as realistic. They're kind of more dollified. So some of our favorite dolls that we're going to talk about, obviously, I have to start with like the icon of the 70s for me. This is one of my favorite Barbies of absolute all time. This is Malibu Barbie. I have a bunch of these. I have like 
eight Malibu Barbies, and I'm not exactly sure which release because um, Malibu Barbie was put out kind of throughout the whole decade, and some were sold in the blue swimsuits, some were sold in red swimsuits um, that were different cuts, some had different head molds. Uh, I know that two of mine are the original releases because the ones made in Japan are the on were only released in the blue swimsuit, but the others, it kind of depends. She was also repackaged in different outfits, like the Olympic Barbies from these years were Malibu Barbies. So they're just really cool and iconic, and I actually saw these advertised on a playset, which we'll get to later, and that's what really, really made me want Malibu Barbie. I bought a reproduction, and then I found um, two of them as a kid at the Salvation Army. This is Allie. She was one of them. Obviously, we love the whole Malibu line. We have a lot of them. Yep, and this is one of my Malibu skippers. This one's made in Japan, I think. Yeah. Yep. She's in really bad shape. She's been chewed up. Um, this was a really popular line. It's not hard to find these dolls at all if you're like secondhand shopping. Obviously, eBay prices are going to be different, but if you're just like going to thrift stores and stuff, you'll find them if you go enough. Um, but I love, I personally love the uh, interesting head molds they used and like the kind of simplistic, less made up look. And they look a lot friendlier than the 60s. And um, they have like this really cool like sun blonde hair. Also another icon are the Superstar dolls that came out in the later 70s. Interestingly enough, Barbie and Ken are box dated different things. She's 76 and he's 77. And you can tell they're kind of going toward the 80s. But see how she's wearing pink and these head molds are what they started to use for yes, a long time um, later. Yes, they used Barbie's head mold all the way through the early 2000s. Um, it kind of got replaced by the Generation Girl head mold in the 90s, but you still saw it. And so this was like very popular. We saw this for many decades. And Shayla is one of my favorites. This was the doll I got boxed. I have the dress fused to her. I've shown her in so many videos, but we had to show her and Ken because we got Ken last year. And um, yeah, Ken got kind of a, a makeover. Personally, I think he looks older than the original Ken. Yes. Um, and kind of more like he's in his 30s, but he's a hunk. I also brought up some examples of like some of the more um, ethnic diversity, racial diversity. So this is a Hispanic Barbie. She came out in the late 70s, probably more towards the 80s, but they they were starting to do this and she has the Steffi head mold. And likewise, this is Kara. She lives upstairs because she's very fragile. This is a testament to the poor quality. These ballerina dolls are known for losing their arms. Um, Kara is actually my only doll of color from this decade. They just did not make them as much. Um, it was kind of controversial, obviously, for the time. It's kind of like the create your own, what is it for the? Creatable, Creatable World. Creatable World dolls. I want one. Controversial for this time. I love that they were starting to incorporate more ethnicities. So Ken had uh, other looks too. This is when you started seeing rooted hair in Ken. This is mod hair Ken. We don't have his outfit. He's a little scary looking. Um, he's another example too of how um, these dolls were kind of cheap. When we got Ken, his legs and arms were fused together, as well as Malibu Skipper, because they're made of like a cheaper plastic. If you don't move them a lot, they can um the like vinyl where it meets the joints will kind of like. My dad up. used some car stuff on okay. Skipper, um, but by the time a, we got him, we used baby. Oil. I have a tutorial on how to loosen that, but yeah. So they're a little bit more fragile and like rubbery feeling, but he has supposed to have like um like. He almost looked like a bank robber. You're, you could put like yeah. sideburns on him and um, beards. They were definitely still playing around a lot. With you also saw a lot more gimmicks um, in the molds, like um, Busy, maybe the Busy line. Yep, we had some of them. Uh, quick ones. Curl, I have a Quick Curl Skipper. Yeah, they were playing around more with the gimmicks. The Dramatic New Living line. They came were, out in the late 60s, yeah. but they continued making Dramatic New Living dolls Unfortunately, in the 70s. a lot of them weren't, like they didn't hold up to the test of time, but they're still really cool. Of course, speaking of that. <gasps> Growing up, Skipper, I want her forever. You crank her arm, she gets taller and... Um, gets boobs. Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't say it. <laughs> I don't mind. She grows bosoms. She has bosom growing action. This was <laughs> not something that parents liked. This was very controversial. But they have been similar I'm not sure if I'm mature enough to have her. With um, the Mycene dolls in the 2000s where they had them grow taller and I think they got bustier too. But yeah, it was... It's kind of, you know, a little bit, kind of a weird design, like, I don't know who thought, like, we should make Skipper hit puberty. You know? Yeah, this is awkward. Kind of odd. Now, we don't just have Barbies from this era. This, we actually, um, in our personal collection, we have more diversity in other brands. 
So um, this is Cindy. Now for you guys who are from like the UK, Cindy and like Europe, Cindy was a really big hit there. But here in the States, like Cindy just eh. She kind of changed different manufacturers. My Marks toys, right? Yes. She's really cute. She's kind of reminds me of Tammy. Um, she was briefly available in the 70s here. And then something Colleen and I both really love, Topper Don dolls. So they're basically like Barbies in a tinier scale. I think miniatures were really popular with kids in the 70s. Just love, I love like 70s makeup. I think it's really cool how they have like the super thick lashes and the like eyeliner and like the long middle parted hair. And the Dawn dolls really reflect that and they have really beautiful quality clothes. And a lot of other companies started making dolls in this likeness. Yes, they had um, the Pippa dolls. A few. Yeah, Mattel made oh, some. Um, Tricky Mickey was kind of like a clone. Yeah, Power Power. Or something like that, yeah. They, these were very, very popular and very detailed. I would say that the Topper Dawn dolls were probably the best quality of the ones that I've seen. From this scale, yeah, I really like them. I'm so excited to show these dolls. <laughs> you like, saved your favorite uh, for last. Yeah, my favorites for last. Mattel started creating a lot of celebrity dolls, as did other companies, like we mentioned in the intro. These are Donnie Marie Osmond. They had like a whole line, they had like play sets, they had tons of extra fashions. You could only get the dolls themselves like available in these looks, but they were very popular. They had like a TV studio set. I wanted. Yeah, they had the little brother Jimmy, I think. And other companies like Mego made quite a few. I think they did like Wonder Woman, Farrah Fawcett, Cher. I've seen some of them and wanted them because I just love collecting celebrity dolls, but they're um, a strange size and so if they're like naked and in not the best condition and they're expensive then I don't buy them but these are awesome and I just this is like a dawn of something I personally love to collect so I think it's really cool when I got my 30 years of Mattel fashion dolls book and I saw that how far back celebrity dolls went I was like I want that I want that even though they're like ugly I want, want them so I don't have any dolls uh, to show you guys except Baby Sweets from this line. So I thought I would show, share some pages from my 30 Years of Mattel Fashion Dolls book, highly recommend. Is the Sunshine Family, which if you're familiar with the Hart Family from the 80s or the Happy Family from the 2000s, this was the original concept. It was in the 70s. They are really funky looking dolls. They have these like beady eyes. I have Baby Sweets. And they're pretty short. They're not like sized like regular Barbies. You can see like there's pro prototypes, but they had a very expansive line. So there were several different releases of the dolls themselves, but they were notorious for encouraging kids to craft and make things themselves. So anytime you bought like a fashion pack or a play set, there was usually some kind of activity to go along with it. Even uh, like this house that they sold for them, you were able to decorate it which I think was a really clever idea and encouraged kids to be more engaged with their toys. And I know I would have loved this when I was growing up. See, they even had an African-American version because not only did I love family dolls, but Colleen and I liked making stuff. We would spend hours cutting out things from magazines and making like rooms out of cardboard boxes. I think it was a very clever design and the dolls themselves aren't necessarily the best quality and they're not necessarily the cutest looking. They look a little sinister like grandpa over there. They're, you have to give them credit where credit is due because they were kind of the starter of all of the other family themed doll lines that we see in more recent decades. Another common defect is shrunken head syndrome. This isn't exclusive to the 70s. You will see this um, in the 80s as well, but I would say it's most prevalent in the 70s. So these are both Malibu skippers. Um, they're not the same country makes, however... The pretty ones made yeah. in Korea. This Philippines lady uh, has a shrunken head. We named her Peanut because her head is so tiny. Basically, as it gets older, um, the plastic the vinyl can like shrink up and get really hard so her head is hard as a rock whereas this skipper is, is soft and flexible that one's made in korea you'll see this on ken you'll see this on barbie it's an unfortunate defect but very prevalent in this time talking about 70s style i'm gonna start here with julie I love how headbands like this were really common. You'll see them on all sorts of fashion dolls. There's also a lot of separates um, in really bright colors that could be mixed and, mixed and match. I also noticed that sandals seem to be like just regular kind of sandals were very common. Yeah, overall it was just like a really fun, bright decade in terms of fashion, which translated really well to doll clothes. So 
These are the mini clothes that I brought up. These three are Tricky Mickey. I don't have any Tricky Mickey dolls, but they were a Dawn competitor. And you can see they're very similar to the authentic Dawn clothes, which I pictured below. I have a lot more. These are just some examples. But one of the main differences is that the knockoffs would use snaps, and you can kind of see how large these metal snaps are. Whereas authentic Dawn clothes use like eye and hooks. So there'd be like these little uh, loops of thread that you would slide the hooks into. Kind of more of a pain, honestly but they um, hide better than these large gaudy snaps and they also came with like little hangers and shoes it's got a lot of bang for your buck considering they were mini dolls the one of the most popular fashion lines up until like through the 80s was Best Buy fashions and these were carded fashions that were um, I would say budget I don't know exactly how much they retailed for but they came on little cards and they tend to be dated differently than their release date so the box date might be 1972 because they reused the same cards but it could have come out in 78 so I do include the release date info for the fashions I have on my Flickr because it is so different but you can see like these peasant style dresses were very 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 common as well as jumpsuits they had some like fancier looking things they also had separates this is a really nice quality one and this one here is actually marketed as a bargain fashions. So they did have other like ranges of fashions. Yeah, Barbie Bargains was another big one. Best Buy uh, was the biggest, I would say the most iconic of the decade and the most accessible. They made some for uh, Ken and Skipper too. And the cool thing is some of them like coordinated. So there's like a Pepsi Skipper outfit and a Pepsi, Pepsi Ken, Ken outfit. Something I don't like though is that like Ken had a lot of these little like collar things, not full shirts. This is what I mean about the quality. And yeah, it's really hard to repair certain items from the 70s for that reason because they're just made from a thin material. But uh, they still use metal snaps. You won't see any Velcro on clothes from these years. And actually a lot of them just didn't have closures. They were made to slide over the dolls or tie around the dolls without any sort of closure. So you're, the black thing in all of this is that if the clothes were kept from other with other clothes of their own time frame they're not going to be picking at each other and destroying each other fabrics some of them are really nice and some of them aren't it just really depends on the fashion I brought up a couple skipper outfits from the earlier 70s like I think these are both 71 or around that um, you can see that like the others they have snaps but they're set up more like um, this one's incomplete but they're set up more like the old 60s clothes like yeah. they're very thick heavy material they came with a lot of accessories they're crafted hangers. better um, these these obviously show their age badly because they were taken bad care of before we had them and then we washed them wrong so <laughs> these were very like these are like nicer like they're see tagged. how they still have the tags they were sold with extras whereas Best Buy fashions you would literally just get like this jumpsuit on a card and not all of these had special names collectors or like Mattel catalogs might have called them something but if you look at the packaging you don't always see like a special name so they're pretty generically packaged just by stock numbers whereas some of the earlier 70s stuff or the more expensive fashions from the 70s still had unique names and the dawn outfits had special names too so like dance till dawn and I've brought up some of my favorite play sets to show you guys just to give an example of what some of these looked like. So this is what 70s box art looked like. The um, logo for Barbie in the 60s and 70s is actually what they still use today. They brought it back in 2008. This was the box that made me want Malibu Barbie. We got this at the flea market years ago. It's in my um, 60s, 70s, and 80s Barbie playsets collection video. And I didn't know who these dolls were, but they were icons to me. And the interesting thing about these old packages is that they'll have like, they'll show you in kind of like quick cartoons the different functions. So this particular place that there's like a table, then you can close it all up. There's like a little um, kitchen. Then there's a deck that folds down. And then I always find it really handy that a lot of the sets will also show you everything that comes with it. Because if you guys know, if you're researching play sets, sometimes the hardest thing to figure out is like what accessories were sold with it, especially if it's not instructions that a lot of people have anymore or they're not available to download on Mattel's website. I don't actually have like any of these accessories. I just have like the table and chairs and bench because ours was um, so used. But yeah, and there's also some color photographs of the same thing. And this is the country home. 
I love, love, love the cartoon designs on 70s furniture. That's one of the reasons why I really love the Fulbin Fun House from 1992 because it kind of captures a similar aesthetic because it has cartoons so bright and groovy and funky looking. And you can see that these are um, starting to move away from the cardboard. They are like this vinyl case material. Even even the beach bus is like this vinyl case material. And things are meant to fold up to be compact. So but they're also stinkier because, you know, the vinyl holds on to um, smell. But also, if this tears, this just has like cardboard inside it. Um, there's this really cute little kitchen setup and the living room just to give you an idea of like the artwork that they used and like see this door opens uh, but this is one of the examples of really cheap plastic this is like as flimsy as um, clone plastic in fact I've seen clones that have way nicer plastic pieces I literally um, I think calling accidentally sat on the bed one day while this was on it and it literally just snapped the leg off. I was able to glue it, but yeah, very, very delicate, but still super cool and detailed. And then the last one that I brought up is the friendship and I actually have a closed up one behind it because I cleaned these before the video because for some reason they weren't bagged, which they should have been. You can see like it, f it folds out and it has like a wing. And again, it's meant to be compact. This is some like really cheap plastic. The, again, there's like the opening doors. It was just like a really creative way of having more structure and durability than the cardboard play sets, but with the same com compact quality. If you compare these to newer play sets, um, like say some of the Monster High ones, you can't really fold them up too much. They take up a lot of space and they're very cumbersome. Say like people wanted to get rid of them. They're very cumbersome, but the nice thing is these, these fold up. And I love uh, this plane in particular. It's a really cool idea. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing some samplings of things from the 70s. You will start to see more types of dolls be introduced as the decades go on. So while there was a lot of Barbie in this video, by the time you get to the 90s and 2000s, you'll definitely be seeing a lot more. We hope you enjoyed, and if you want to watch any of the collection videos that are affiliated, check out my collections playlist. I also have all of these items and more from the decades on my Flickr and my albums. If you're interested, anyone can look at it. And until next time, love your dolls, love yourself, and love your life.